is it time to invest in Rolls Royce? Rolls Royce over the last three months has seen a 27% decline in its stock price, broadly in line with the rest of the market, but also a bit more than many others. Now, part of that drop has been caused by losing their CEO, Warren East. However, that CEO is responsible for taking them from a 3.1 billion pound loss to 12 months later, making a profit of 124 million. Now, this doesn't seem like a lot, but that turnaround is absolutely huge. The company has also hired MWM Consulting in order to headhunt someone for the new position of CEO at Rolls. As a result, the stock has stabilized and it streamlined itself with job cuts, which I know are bad, but it's setting itself up for future growth and streamlining its processes, its management and its staffing in order to be a leaner machine. In the short term, Rolls has some potential opportunities coming its way. Rolls Royce is in the defense sector and as you know, with everything going on in Ukraine, lots of nations are looking to strengthen their armies, their armament, and as a result, Rolls Royce could get a lot of work from these companies buying in more military products. They're working with Turkey to create their fifth series of combat engine for their aircrafts. They have the contract to replace all the engines on the USA's B-52 fleet. This is around 608 engines in total. But on top of this, you'll get the longevity of supplying parts for maintenance and servicing. Rolls-Royce will also supply vertical aerospace with electric motors for their aircraft of up to 5,000 units. This is all great news, but it's not what I'm here to tell you about. What I'm here to tell you about is SMR. Now, in case you don't know, SMR stands for Small Modular Reactor. And these are basically small scale nuclear reactors that can create enough electricity to power up to a million homes. Now, SMR is low cost in comparison to larger reactors. It can also be used as a clean energy source alongside renewables when they're being intermittent, i.e. there's no sun or there's no wind. They'll be made in the UK and they'll be made in factory conditions. So because they're modular, each module will be made inside the factory, it'll be put on lorries and it'll be transported to site where it will then be assembled. Now when it's assembled, it's also assembled in a factory. So they build a factory on site, they make the, the reactor inside this factory and then they take the factory down and it's done and it's built. This will mean reduced construction time and it means reduced noise and effect on the local area while it's being built. And these things actually look like something out of grand designs. They're not your typical power plant. A typical unit can run at 95% capacity, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for 60 years. 60 years being its lifespan. Now you can use these together and also they'll run independently so that when one's off, the other one comes on, etc., etc. So you have 100% power, 100% capacity all the time. Although the application to build these hasn't gone through yet, the government is really, really keen to help push it through. Due to the energy crisis we're having at the moment, our ever reliant on fossil fuels for making electricity. This, along with the UK's ambition to have zero net carbon emissions by 2050, all lean in Rolls Royce's favour again this push through very quickly. Boris Johnson has set out on his plans for the UK to get 25% of its electricity from nuclear. Currently we get 16% of our electricity from nuclear and that is spread across six different nuclear reactors or nuclear power station sites. However by 2024 three of these will be retired and by 2030 a fourth one will be retired, meaning there's only two left actually working. Now Rolls-Royce has achieved most of its investment through private investors, but the government is actually putting in 210 million pounds to help Rolls-Royce develop their SMR systems. As a result of putting their own money in, the government and Boris are leaning on the nuclear industrial regulator in order to accept and begin the process of approving the SMR systems. They're keen to do this because although they want larger nuclear reactors as well, they understand that these take many, many years to build. And the SMRs will take up some of the slack whilst these other bigger power stations are being built and constructed. Once it's approved, the actual factory where the modular units will be made can start to be constructed. Now, not only are these SMRs inherently quick in their modular design, but they currently use proven and readily available products 
in their design. Rolls-Royce also have experience in using nuclear as they currently use nuclear in their naval submarines. This means there is little learning curve and there's already high efficiency. Now these units can actually be placed off grid. So if you want to place it off grid to power solely a hydrogen plant for making hydrogen fuel, you can do that. But you can also place them in old decommissioned sites. So where there used to be a coal power station, you can now put an SMR in its place. Now these places already have a water system which they use for cooling the reactor and they also have a connection to the grid. This also increases the speed at which you can get these things up and running because they're major bits of infrastructure are already in place. Now I know this is all years down the line but I expect to see bumps at certain pivotal points so when the application is approved, when the factory goes up, when they start to production. It's something that isn't going to take off straight away, but it's something you really, really want to keep your eye on. It's something I'll be keeping my eye on. And it doesn't stop there. There is longevity of this system because it can be sold to other countries. Now, imagine that, a world we live in where the UK is creating something that lots of other countries can use. The potential for growth here is absolutely massive. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, and this isn't financial advice, but I'm definitely be keeping a close eye on Rolls-Royce and utilising it in my portfolio as and when I see fit. What do you think about Rolls-Royce? Have you got any hidden gems that you're keeping an eye on, hoping they're going to explode in the future? Let me know in the comments below, and thank you very much for watching.